Dear patient, it hasn't been easy to stay home and it hasn't been easy to close our practice for all this time. But although we were closed, we started to plan our return. We envisioned a practice that is adapted to the current situation, a practice where you feel comfortable coming in and being treated in it, a practice that is Corona safe. So we designed a workflow that addresses this, a workflow that is efficient in time and minimizes interactions and the number of people in the office. So how can we achieve that? Be efficient and practical and also deliver high-end treatment. Plus, make you feel how much we care about you. So here is how it goes. Your appointment will be scheduled over the phone, as always. We will be asking a few extra questions on the phone as part of our screening process. Thank you for your time answering them. You will get an appointment reminders to your email and phone as a text message. These would have a quick questionnaire that you will be answering. It's called the wellness form. We are doing this to ensure no patients with symptoms enter our office. We apply the same to the doctors and all team members in our practice. We also have a special protocol for handling mail and packages. These get disinfected before entering the practice. Now here's the first big difference. Don't just walk in. We will text you when we are ready for you. Then walk in. Make sure you wear a mask. Our office is a masked environment. If you don't have a mask, we'll provide one to you. We got you covered. In case you didn't fill out the wellness form, you'll fill it out there. It only takes a few seconds. By the way, we only allow scheduled patients to come in. We have a special protocol for all patients, which is the same as we are using for our staff. We will take your temperature, We'll ask you to sanitize your hands. You will see HEPA filters scattered around the office. These machines filter and remove all particles in the air, including the COVID virus. Then you're off to your treatment. We will ask you to pre-rinse before your treatment. This reduces the number of microorganisms in your mouth and minimizes contamination. Our treatment room has been prepared prior to your arrival to maximize the safety of your treatment. On top of that, we are using a special fogger that kills all viruses with a non-toxic solution. In our new protocols, we don't produce aerosols during a cleaning and we will manually polish your teeth. As things evolve, we will keep you posted on the new protocols. If you're planned to have a procedure done, your check-in process will be the same. We will bring you to the treatment room and besides the doctors and the assistants and the HEPA filter, you'll see another machine. This is a device that suctions all the aerosols and captures them. Look at it like a large vacuum cleaner for medical purposes. Our doctors and assistants will wear personal protective equipment, including a gown, a cap, a special mask and a shield. It takes some time to put them on, but it's still us below. As much as we would want to, we will not be able to shake your hand. We are sorry. During the treatment, as always, we will focus on making sure you are comfortable. Medical offices tend to be cold, so make sure to bring a jacket or even a blanket. Feel free to use your phone or other devices to listen to music during your treatment. After getting post-operative instructions and some medications, you're set to go. Your follow-up appointment has already been scheduled and your payment has been processed. Thank you for entrusting us with your treatment. We appreciate your confidence. Speedy recovery. We got you covered. Good evening, everybody. This is Dr. Zeev Simon. I'm here in my practice together with Dr. Ari Rosenblatt, my friend and partner. Hi, Ari. How are you? Hello. Great to see you. The 10 practical lessons on protecting from COVID-19. One of the great things about uh, this time, Ari, was actually collaborating with you and setting up the practice, creating the new protocols, getting excited about the new things that we discovered and implemented, some of which we'll uh, share today. We the need to research everything in order to keep us and our patient healthy and create an environment in our office that we can reassure ourselves and our staff and our patient 
that it's safe to come back. And this was very rewarding. In this webinar, uh, you're going to learn how to protect yourself from COVID-19. And we're going to be sharing our experience based on our professional, but also our personal experience uh, during this time. Uh, in the past few months, our life has been all about COVID protection. Uh, we brainstormed, we measured, we simulated uh, a lot of the new protocols that you're seeing now in the office, uh, and we also executed. Uh, we put it to the test, and we've been in full capacity now uh, almost three months here in our Beverly Hills practice uh, doing a full schedule of periodontal cleanings uh, as well as uh, different surgical procedures. Uh, our book with our protocols has now been uh, used by over 20,000 dentists all around the world. Uh, we're extremely excited uh, for it. Um, and we're happy this is working not just for us, but also for other dentists that um, we're able to shorten their learning curve and we're able just to get to the bottom line and implement. Because this is uh, uncharted territory or uncharted waters for a lot of dentists. A lot of dentists had uh, tremendous anxiety, uh, number one, financial anxiety of not having any income, having their practices shut down, uh, then uh, shut down for other reasons. And we appreciate all the great feedback we've received from uh, the different doctors uh, in our community uh, utilizing the protocols. And we appreciate your, your friendship and we appreciate you uh, for uh, trusting us um, with your patients. So we're back in full capacity uh, here in Beverly Hills, and we concluded that it is safe to practice dentistry for patients as well as all the team members and the doctors. And if we had to narrow it down to only three principles to avoid a COVID infection, it has to do with staying away from the sick, and this we do through our vigorous screening process, through self-protection. The COVID enters our body uh, through the airways and through the eyes, so we must protect those uh, at all costs. We keep repeating this point to, throughout this uh, training. And having good hygiene practices of disinfecting our hands, disinfecting the different objects that we touch, especially this guy right here, and the different surfaces that we come across uh, during the day. So the information that you'll be learning today uh, comes from a medical dental practice, but you can apply it also in your personal house. You don't have to wear this type of suit. When the uh, pandemic started, uh, nobody knew which way it was going to go. So Ari and myself bought everything that was available on the market, including uh, this type of protection that is used in hospital for COVID patients. Uh, you don't need this, and we'll show you what is reasonable and cost-effective uh, the pandemic is terrible. There's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of hardship and uh, financial problems around the world and sickness and other things. That, but this webinar is not about bringing you down. This webinar is about what you need to do now. We must adapt to a new reality and not dwell on how it was before. I actually forgot how it was before, how I practiced before. Uh, we are just in a different world. We do things differently, and some of it will be shared with you today. One of the biggest problems in this pandemic is the tremendous suffering because of anxiety, the uncertainty. We call it the pandemic of fear and misinformation. So we want to dispel some of the misconceptions uh, here in this webinar and help you get rid of some of the fear that you have. Why? Because fear is paralyzing. Fear is very damaging to your mindset. Uh, a lot of dentists experience fear uh, for many, many reasons. And when you think about fear, uh, you can have two options to deal with fear. Either you forget everything and run, or you face everything and rise. So we chose the second option. Obviously, we're here, we're smiling, we're confident about uh, what we achieved so far. We keep going strong. And when we started uh, equipping our practice to go back after the closure, uh, the, the open uh, knowledge was that there's a world shortage in PPE 
personal protective equipment. We did not accept this. We knew this is the reality, but we did not accept the fact that we cannot get PPE. So we kept looking and we spent uh, over four or 500, by now 500 hours combined, uh, researching where to get PPE from. The supply chain has been broken and it's been all over the new news, uh, shortage of PPE equipment, problems, uh, not just in a dental setting, but also in a, in a hospital setting. And PPE is now considered the new gold. The demand for PPE is so great that the, 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 um, uh, the health of our communities is compromised. So when we heard something like uh, there's a, a, a broken PPE supply chain, uh, that can lead to a lot of fear. But uh, we did not buy into this. We did not buy into this. Instead, we bought PPE. That's what we bought. And we built a system that is self-sufficient. Uh, our mentality, and talk for both of us, is an immigrant mentality. And when we face a, a crisis uh, like this pandemic, where there's shortage, where there's uh, true challenges uh, on a business level, on a personal level, and uh, it, it's, it's a health crisis, uh, we thought about the, the future of our practice and our goal and our mission to treat patients and treat periodontal disease and take care of all of you. And we cannot do this without the proper PPE. Um, hence, we created something called a CPR, the Corona Prevention Room here in our practice. We did a, a remodel. And as we accumulated uh, protective equipment, uh, we filled our garages, my garage, uh, Ari's garage is full. Uh, we needed to rent storage space. You can see some of it here. And when the space ran out, we needed to use your uh, living room. And I think it was almost up to the ceiling. So thank you for uh, allowing us to store some of the PPE in your house. How was that to have all of this there? Uh, well, I like to look at the stuff because we uh, uh, made a point not to be paralyzed. And um, immediately when the quarantine was announced, when we were aware of the PPE shortage, uh, Ziv and myself uh, stayed at home through the night, uh, communicated with Europe, communicated with Asia. And we started to buy things because we knew that it's going to take some time for it to be delivered to us or whatever. So we accumulated all necessary stuff. And I uh, loved looking at it. Uh, the only problem is my wife didn't like uh, my, uh, our living room being uh, allocated as a storage room. And eventually, as Zip will show you, we managed to uh, categorize it and get it into a nice storage facility, including our office. But it was at least reassuring every day when I woke up to see that we have our equipment ready, that when the quarantine was lifted, we would uh, be easily be back in business as well as provide safety for our patients and our staff. Yes, thank you, Aaron. So uh, during the closure, we started the remodel in the back. If you know our office, it's a pretty long hallway. Right in the back to the right, we had a, a, a chart room that seemed pretty small. Uh, we basically gutted it. Uh, we installed a washer and a dryer. We isolated it. We called it the CPR, the Corona Prevention Room or the COVID Prevention Room. <clears throat> And it's equipped. It's self-sufficient. Um, we don't need any PPE for the next couple of years. We can wash and dry our PPE. We can sterilize in there. Uh, we have uh, tons of things for the protection of our team members, for the protection of the doctors, and of course, our patients. And we also like to believe it's good for the environment. We have less waste. Uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful idea. And I have to say, this was Ari's idea to... To do this. We did it together, but Ari, this was your initiative. So uh, thank you for having the foresight uh, to create something that great. It's much I'm appreciated. Gladly. Okay. And uh, uh, we are um, not shy to show this to some of the patients. Some patients want to see where you're getting this beautiful protective equipment and that can make you feel safe uh, from the moment you walk in uh, to the moment you walk out of the office or the building. And uh, uh, big thanks and big appreciation uh, to you for your confidence and your trust in us as your periodontist, as your implant specialists. And uh, we want to share with you uh, what we've done here. So although we're going to be wearing a lot of different equipment, the protective equipment for our bodies, but also special masks 
and special eye protection. It's still us underneath the mask. It's still Ari and myself. Uh, we like to uh, smile and we like to make you feel comfortable. And we want to share with you the methods that we've uh, now implemented in our office and show you how you can take these types of protocols and implement them in your personal life. Because, you know, this pandemic is not going to end in, in two months or three months. It's not going to end in six months or a year, but it's not going to last forever. Okay, don't lose hope. It's not going to last forever. But right now we must adapt. We have to tweak and change the way we do things for our own safety and the safety of our loved ones. And if you want to be 100% safe, and not incur even one risk, then there's only one way to do it, is to stay at home. Don't leave the house, don't leave your room, don't see anybody. Well, that's 100%, but then you'll have some side effects. Uh, if you need to work, then there'll be some financial side effects. Uh, but mostly, the biggest side effect that is now uh, due to the pandemic, and we see it in all, all age groups, is tremendous depression because we are social creatures. We like to engage, we like to uh, interact and communicate and connect with other human beings uh, and family and, and friends. And that's not available now. So staying at home uh, is not a great option. Okay, so uh, what we'll share with you are 10 practical lessons on protecting you from COVID-19. And let's start with lesson number one. Lesson number one is build your resistance. Your best chance against COVID-19 is your immune system. This is, these are the soldiers and the generals and the airports and the infantry that is fighting for you against intruders, against viri, against bacteria, fungi in your body. You cannot thrive without an immune system and you must strengthen it. You must do anything that you can to make yourself strong, especially now because this virus is pretty contagious, as we all know. So a strong immune system is in a body that is well rested. Seven, eight hours of sleep. I'm guilty of not sleeping that much. I'll get better, I promise. A body that is well nourished, what you eat, your fuel, the nutrients that you consume uh, need to be of great quality and nourishing and not damaging to you. Your body needs to be well conditioned. The uh, um, great side effects and great uh, benefits of having uh, conditioning. And not less important is to have a well-balanced mind that is calm and focused. And by the way, that comes also from nutrition and conditioning and a certain mindset that you must have during a crisis like that. And one of the most common questions is, is supplementation important? Should you take all sorts of supplements? And of course, you must ask your doctor because supplements are medications and they can interact with your current medications. But uh, we can tell you 100% uh, supplementation is important. Both of us are in myself supplement uh, beyond what we feel is very good nutrition. If you want to help your uh, respiratory condition, and you want to have the strongest antioxidant, then we're looking at a supplement called NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Uh, it basically uh, replenishes the most powerful antioxidant in the body, uh, glutathione. It helps with respiratory condition. It's something that you take once a day. We've been taking this for months now. If you want to regulate your immune system to fight uh, viral infections, which is very apropos right now, well, vitamin D. Vitamin D uh, plays a very important role in bone metabolism. Uh, we know that we're not getting enough vitamin D because we're not exposed to the sun. And we, uh, most of us are deficient. And if you're deficient, you're making yourself susceptible to viral infections, respiratory infections such as influenza. So vitamin D uh, on daily basis. If you actually want to fight back and damage the COVID-19, then... It's been shown that a zinc supplement is, is extremely important. Uh, it has antiviral effect, effects. It uh, delays viral replication. It somehow find its way, finds its way uh, into the body. And Ari, you and I have been taking zinc uh, for, for several months now, I think since, since the beginning. 
immediately since the beginning. And I would only emphasize zinc is uh, present in many multivitamins. Uh, some multivitamins uh, are placing 100% of the daily necessary. Many vitamins, if you look it up, actually uh, provides not 100% daily maximum uh, necessary for uh, infection prevention. So if you take any multivitamins, check how much that multivitamin contains zinc, and then check with your doctor if a zinc supplement is beneficial. And I think most MDs will agree that especially at this particular time, zinc has a very beneficial effect. And here we go on, vitamin C is obviously very important as uh, Ziv alluded. And again, check your multivitamins, don't overdose of vitamin C, but vitamin C has very few side effects uh, if you take it in larger doses, because uh, if you take too much, you will just uh, uh, get rid of it by your urine. So there are very little side effects. Make sure that you get it in vitamin form, make sure you get it in your fruits. And I think that's a great idea now to be proactive with vitamins and supplements. One of the new things that um, I found out in the internet, there have been more than a few studies that the combination of vitamin C and zinc combined with Sambucus or Sambuca, or commonly known uh, is the elderly flower. And uh, many, many internet uh, publication have shown that either in areas where people uh, consume a lot of elderberry, uh, animals who uh, uh, eat the elderberry flowers tend to have less uh, uh, stronger immune reaction against flu, against SARS. And so this vitamin is available for sale now. What I like about this, and I would point out also what's important with all the supplements, when you look at, the, um, at this particular vitamin, it's a lozenger, and it's very important, especially for us dentists, gum specialists, for you to point out, please check that you have either minimal or ideally no sugar in there, because if you have a lozenger and you take it at night and you leave your mouth uh, full with a su sugary uh, substance, uh, you will get cavities. So uh, please be smart about when you choose your supplement to see that they are sugar-free. Uh, one of the newer things in the last couple of weeks that showed up in the medical journal is uh, this particular supplement, quercetin. It's basically an anti-inflammatory that people have taken uh, to prevent heart disease, to prevent inflammatory processes. Again, we are suggesting for you to do your own research and check with your doctor, but those are things that when we uh, scrouch the internet and do our research that are coming up, not only... Uh, by uh, people who are just posting it, but in scientific journal and people who believe in uh, preventive medicine as Andrew Weil in Arizona are publicizing that this will improve your overall being and keep you healthy and might play a role in uh, COVID prevention. Here you see a combination of, um, of uh, supplements, the zinc, the quercetin, uh, in the middle is a uh, um, Japanese uh, uh, product that uh, many chiro practitioners are prescribing. Uh, again, you have to do your own research, but I think everybody should get educated because this is very easy to do. And I can only tell you that I've taken the quercetin and the, the mushroom supplement, including the vitamin C. I've been always on uh, extra strong uh, vitamin D supplements. And knock on wood, I don't uh, look older than uh, 91 years old. <laughs> Excellent. And I have those supplements here on my desk. And if I forget to take them, Ari reminds me. And not vice versa. <laughs> so, um, yeah, all these supplements are fantastic. And um, they're important. They're important. And uh, please consult with your physician to make sure there's no interactions. And beyond nutrition and good supplementation, uh, a splash of positivity is important as well. So the mindset and the way uh, you look at things, surrounding yourself with positive people, uh, believe it or not, uh, helps your health as well. Now, what we're doing, our team uh, is uh, supplementing as well. It's not just the doctors. So when uh, our team checks in into the office, we have a self-screening process where each 
employee or team member, including the doctors, measures their own temperature, uh, sanitizes their hands first, and then writes down on a log uh, their temperature, uh, the absence of any symptoms, and we're very, very strict about that. So any person that uh, comes into the office, uh, of course, only team members and the doctors uh, uh, has to go through uh, this protocol. Basically, everybody who's coming into the um, office uh, immediately before we step into the hallway checks ourselves with uh, temperature and any symptoms. Uh, we either wash our hands uh, again or use the Purell and remind ourselves to uh, take the supplements that we all agree to take first thing in the morning. And uh, without it, we uh, don't step into the office. Uh, you can see here the Purell, the zinc, uh, the NACA. And basically, uh, we have made it a policy in our office that if anybody forgets to check themselves or take the supplements, even the doctors are allowed to be told by the staff, step back and please take your temperature. So we adhere to very, very strict guidelines for our protection as well as protecting our patients. Excellent. So uh, to finish off lesson number one, I wanted to talk a little bit about COVID fighting foods and, and it's not my area of expertise. What we're sharing you today is what we personally do in our life, in our practice and personally and we do most of it based on the scientific evidence and the, the medical, evidence, medical evidence that is currently uh, coming up more and more in regards to COVID-19. Uh, the benefits of fermented vegetables uh, has long been established uh, in, in, in nutrition, long time in terms of probiotics, uh, specifically kimchi and sauerkraut, which I personally don't love, but um, I, I eat them as well because uh, they're now showing that uh, these uh, types of fermented vegetables, they uh, work with certain receptors that the COVID likes to attach to into the lungs. And it's not necessarily controversial. We just don't understand the mechanism uh, 100%. However, uh, they prove to uh, be very effective in minimizing uh, those COVID uh, infection. Here's something that I do. Ari, I don't know if you do this, but uh, I... I have a habit for many, many months now is to uh, make myself a morning immune boost boost uh, that is made out of lemons. So it's very simple. Uh, I personally hate complicated things. Uh, I keep a very simple, um, uh, simple methods. Also, when I do surgeries, I keep it as simple as I can. Lemons, ginger, garlic, and turmeric. Uh, boil, boil it with water for about half an hour. Let it cool down overnight, and then I just drink a little bit like a shot every morning. Uh, first of all, it's great for your immune system, for the cleanse. It causes the liver to uh, help you secrete some of the bile, so digestion is great. Uh, but also from an immunity point of view, an anti-inflammation because of the turmeric. Uh, give it a try. It doesn't taste that bad at all. All right, give it a try, okay? You can put a little bit of sweetener there if you want to, but it's not necessary. It's uh, it's pretty potent because of the ginger. It doesn't taste bad, and it makes you feel good, okay? Whether it does something inside, I, I know it does, but the feeling is uh, fantastic. So build your resistance and boost your immunity to fight COVID-19. Lesson number two, wear a well-fitted mask with emphasis on the fitted Okay, and this is a photo shoot picture. Masks are becoming part of our culture. It's part of the things that we talk about uh, with our friends and our family, and we get busy with and we debate which masks to wear. So uh, the Simons decided to do a photo shoot during COVID time with all the different uh, cleaning products. It's kind of confusing. Which mask should you wear on daily basis as a, not a doctor, as a, let's call it a civilian? Should you wear a surgical mask or a KN95? Should you wear an N95 with a valve or a, actually an actual N95 NIOSH approved? Uh, it's quite, quite confusing. Or should you wear a washable cloth mask that you can just wash over and over again? The key is not the filter. You see, I have a lot of masks here on my desk for uh, demonstration purposes, and I also use them, obviously. The key is the fit. So pick a mask that is very well fitted. Remember where the COVID enters the body. It enters through the mouth, the 
first port of entry and through the nose. So if you have a well-fitted mask to prevent those droplets and aerosol from going in, uh, you're well protected. And it so happens that the masks that have a little nose adjustment uh, option and that have two straps are much more uh, well-fitted. They fit better and they protect you better. And we realize that with the PPE shortage, uh, it's not easy to get, but it is possible. Uh, you may have to pay premium for those masks. Uh, normally, they would cost a dollar or two. Now, probably 10 to 20. But what is your health worth? Worth um, more than that. So the masks that can be adjusted to the nose and have two straps are the ones that are well-fitted. And if, if you cannot reach them, get them, uh, find masks that are uh, fitting snugly. And it will leave some nice marks for a couple of minutes after you remove the mask. But again, it's well worth it because you're well protected. One of the concerns we shared with you in our previous webinar is when you breathe through the mask, aren't you breathing back the CO2 because you're breathing in uh, oxygen, O2, and you're exhaling CO2? Are you breathing it back? Are, can you get hypoxic? Well, there were not too many reported cases, and we wanted to share something important with you. The size of the CO2 molecule is 0 0.00065 microns. A micron is a, a meter divided by million, so it's a very small. The filter of an N95 is 0.3, so that tells us that the CO2 can go out. And even if it's trapped a little bit, it's not going to cause harm. You're not wearing those masks while you sleep in 24 hours a day. But what, what's very important is not to stack masks. Don't wear a mask over a mask over a mask thinking you have better protection. It's not so much the filtering. It's not filtering, it's the fit around your face. And when we started practicing, we would stack masks because we did not know. We don't, did not have the newest mask we'll show you. And I uh, checked my oxygen percentage in my blood at what we call a pulse oximeter. It was still okay. It was 95%, but we want to get to a 99, uh, 100%. So find one mask that is well-fitted. How about bandanas? Uh, I've seen a lot of our patients. I've seen people on, on the street. Uh, what, using bandanas. In principle, it is a face covering and it does comply with the law. And it is the law. You'll get fined, uh, I think, between $100 to $500, depending on how many times you're caught. Uh, so please wear a mask. The problem with the bandana, except for, you know, it's a great fashion statement, maybe. Uh, it's very long and it has the potential to catch on different other contaminants and it's not very well sealed. It needs to be tied in the back, usually, and it's not very protective. So I think the people that can get away with bandana is, you know, maybe Axel Rose and Johnny Depp, but not on the face. Uh, if you love the bandana, uh, make sure that it's sealed. And now I, I saw on Amazon preparing for this uh, presentation, uh, there are bandana masks. So you have the pattern of bandana, but it's an actual mask underneath. So check it out. and. Uh, uh, Go for the bandana if you'd like to. Another important point is uh, what happens with the size of the virus? Does the virus, can the virus go through an N95 mask? So the virus itself is 0 0.125 microns. The filter of a, let's say an N95 is 0 0.3 microns, so bigger than the virus, and it filtrates 95%. That's what the 95 uh, stands for. So it sounds scary. So what, why are we using masks with uh, that big of a porosity or, or size for, of the pores for the virus to go in? Well, remember that the virus is not a living element. It's not alive. It's an RNA, RNA virus. It's a couple strands of RNA that must travel through droplets and aerosol. These droplets uh, range between one and 500 microns and the droplets will not enter the mask and will not leave the mask. So by wearing a mask, you are not only protecting yourself, you're protecting the environment. Uh, we strongly recommend you wear a shield. Uh, at the beginning, it was impossible to get a shield. Now uh, it's pretty easy.
pretty easy and pretty affordable to get multiple shields with uh, replenishable plastic sheets. Wear a shield when you go out or at least wear some eye protection, ideally with closure on the side as well, uh, because the virus can enter our body through the eyes. So in our practice, and a lot of you have been to the practice already in the past three months, but a lot of patients are calling and asking questions. And that's one of the reasons we created this webinar. When you come to the practice, you'll see that our front desk is wearing surgical and washable masks. They are not clinical staff. They're sitting behind the sneeze guards and they're welcoming you, they're screening you. Our hygienists, our clinical staff, they're treating you. So they're wearing the KN95, but also the P100. Uh, P100 stands for 100% protection. And when you see the doctors uh, in, in actual clinical work uh, treating you, uh, we have two types of masks. One is called the P100 half face. So it just fits over the nose. And then we have some eye protection. Uh, sometimes with goggles, sometimes we have loops and, and magnification. And the other type is also a P100, which is a full face. And the P100 stands for 100% protection. Nothing goes through those filters back and forth. So you are 100% you are protected as an operator, as a clinician. And we want not only to make a point, we want to make sure that our staff, our team members, and the doctors are protected and safe and not contracting anything. And we provided them with the uh, top of the line masks uh, available. And they're very hard to get as well. They require uh, training. Here's the uh, P100 half face uh, with my eye protection and uh, illumination. And Ari, thank you so much for uh, hosting us in your house because these masks uh, require special training uh, and they require uh, not just training, they require testing to make sure that the mask is well fitted around the face. So this is Ari's house. We, uh, who did this uh, arrangement, Ari? Was it you or Anne? Uh, definitely my wife. Uh, she made sure the right that things. we have... Uh, social distancing be and this um, the staff was willing to come on a saturday uh, this way we didn't have to do it in close uh, confinement in our office we have a large staff of uh, 15 16 people so at that particular day we had all the hygienists there on a separate uh, visit we had uh, all our assistants there also and basically uh, all our hygienists now treat the patient with the P100 mask in order to protect themselves as well as the patients. And it takes a lot of training. You have to be certified for it. But the big plus is that once you have done this investment, they are much easier to breathe in and out. And uh, this way we can afford to work eight, nine hours in the office without being exhausted because everybody who has tried to wear those uh, 95 masks knows that uh, they are difficult to wear uh, physically and that they do constrict the amount of breathing that you can do. So the big advantage of wearing those masks is that they're awkward. You might sweat a little bit underneath there, but they do provide 100% protection, but they are very easy to breathe in and out. Here you can see uh, Dr. Simon going through the certification that uh, a computer is attached to uh, the mask and Dr. Simon has to go to all different movements of uh, his body, his head, uh, as, he, as he working in order to check for any kind of leakage. And this uh, certifies that uh, he is wearing the mask correctly for his protection and as well as for the patient and the staff. Excellent. So yeah, that, that, was, that was great. This testing part it reminded me of Rocky IV. I felt like I'm an athlete being tested with these special masks and um, then it was over after five minutes. So um, yeah, we are using these masks uh, routinely uh, in our surgeries. All our clinical staff uh, has that as well. And the one thing about those masks is that our voice sounds muffled. We sometimes have to speak up. We have to sometimes uh, pronounce, announce things in a particular way. And that created also an issue in terms of communicating with, uh, amongst ourselves with the, you know, some of our surgeries uh, involve uh, three staff members, uh, one doctor, two doctors, depending on the type of surgery. 
and we experimented with Bluetooth uh, headphones that did not work that well because those Bluetooth headsets are uh, so delicate and you hear all the noise. Uh, we started to develop a sign language uh, that pertains to surgery, requesting certain things from the assistants back and forth, what type of sutures to use, uh, what's next if we need a break or we need um, the camera or taking an x-ray. Uh, these are all symbols that we came up with, with uh, for uh, internal use. So our surgeries are efficient and we understand each other. There's nothing more important than communication, by the way, in life. But in surgery, we have to be able to communicate with one another. And because I'm from Israel, uh, the team decided to add uh, one more hand motion, uh, one, one hand uh, sign, which basically represents just a minute, okay? And I'm not going to say it in Hebrew. And besides, um, seen with a P100 leaving Rite Aid uh, was Miss, Mrs. Simon uh, here. Uh, she wanted a mask as well. And, you know, what a pleasure, you know, to, to get your wife, uh, you know, what she wants for her birthday, P100 mask. Let's move on to lesson number three. Lesson number three, speaking of masks, we must disinfect our masks. The outside of the mask is dirty. The inside is technically clean, but it's not really clean because it, it has some moisture from, uh, from our own saliva, from our breathing, and that can harbor bacteria as well. And it's kind of tricky to disinfect masks. We have three options we wanted to propose to you. One is taking some hydrogen peroxide, diluting it uh, quite a bit, 20% uh, hydrogen peroxide, 80% uh, water, so very, very lo uh, low concentration. And uh, putting it in a spray bottle, spraying those masks. Uh, you can also use dry heat, like in an oven or to toaster oven or a microwave. Uh, or you, the simplest way is just leave it in the sun for a couple hours and your mask will have no COVID and nothing on it. Just let it dry and put it in heat. Remember, heat kills the COVID. Uh, we have the luxury of having a UV oven, uh, UV uh, light or UVC in specific, uh, kills uh, everything, kills bacteria, kills viruses, and will kill your skin and be very dangerous at a certain uh, wavelength. We have these ovens we can throw in our masks and we call, them, we call it baking them. We bake them for uh, as many minutes as we want, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, nothing stays on them. And uh, I believe you can get UV ovens as well. These ovens also accommodate the P100 mask, which is a little bit more substantial in size. And uh, that ensures that after we utilize them, after we disinfect them, they get sterilized again inside the UV oven. Uh, as the pandemic, pandemic uh, continued, uh, that was the time for innovation. And, and we thought about what is the simplest way, the most cost-effective cost way that the, we can create a mechanism to quickly disinfect. Well, this was at the time uh, where the washable gowns were not available. They were even in a more precarious supply chain and we would have to go to uh, tailors or a factory to make them. Long story, they're available now. And before we had only the paper PPE and had to go from patient to patient. And they were, as Dr. Simon said, like gold. And we wanted to disinfect them and make them virus free. We knew that heat is killing the virus. So we assigned an assistant to basically have this hot air uh, along the lines of where we were exposed to the virus. And the beautiful thing of it is it dries uh, within 30 to 60 seconds. And uh, basically this was used before uh, when you travel to uh, make your clothing look nice and uh, remove all the uh, uh, little uh, wrinkles away from it. But basically we found this a very quick method to at least disinfect our PPE. As we have told you, uh, we keep still the uh, paper uh, PPE available, but use it less and less since we have now the washable gowns and washable caps. And now this is basically as a reserve. But uh, at home, you may want to consider using this on closing if you don't want to continuously wash it. I would only add to it, and Dr. Simon will go to it, uh, speaking about closing, 
Uh, the same like we go into the office when you think about closing. One of the first thing is that I think we all are going back to the Japanese tradition that when you come home, remove your shoes that have touched everything and spray them either with something like this or just use an alcohol spray and leave them outside. The problem with alcohol is that you have to leave it for at least three to five minutes wet in order to kill the virus. But you leave your shoes just in the front of the office and the same with closing or wash your closing when you come from uh, contact of other people back home. Excellent. So yeah, and the beautiful thing about this steamer, it's very, very inexpensive. It's not a medical device. You can get it online and it has actually a USB. It charges from a USB. So uh, I, I think it's less than $100. So it's very cost effective and give it a try. Lesson number four, sanitize your hands every 30 minutes. Wow, sounds like a lot, but here's the caveat. When you're outside the house, when you're outside the house, then you get exposed. In the house, uh, we'll talk about what to do in, at home, but when you're at home, you don't have to wash your hands every 30 minutes. You'll get terrible eczema. But when you're outside the house, find opportunities to sanitize or wash your hands. You won't believe how many times we are touching things in our environment. It's just great practice uh, to have great hand hygiene, and this is uh, one of our protocols here in the office. Our team sanitizes their hands every 30 minutes. And it, it's very, very important. So uh, hand sanitizer, any type, I know there was a huge shortage. It's pretty simple to get right now. We don't see any uh, shortage right now. What we recommend you do is get just one of those big jugs. Uh, you can get them at Home Depot, extremely inexpensive, and just smaller dispensers and just keep replenishing and have it available because we don't know when uh, the supply chain is going to be broken again. In the office, we have those automatic sanitizer dispensers. You can get them as well for the house, but in, at home, uh, it it's, doesn't really matter. Hand washing or hand sanitizing? What's more effective? Well, it's proven that hand washing is the number one priority, number one uh, choice. If you can, if a sink and water and soap are available, that's number one. But if not, a uh, hand sanitizer would be second. Now, if you're walking in around, if you, if you are working and going into um, different types of buildings, are you pressing buttons? Are you opening doors? Are you touching handles? Make sure you keep track of what you ta touch and sanitize right after. Uh, we all have the tendency to touch our face, touch our clothes, touch all sorts of objects around us. Uh, we have to have uh, a conscious mind in regards to what we touched and have sanitizer available all the time in your pockets. Uh, we have them here in every corner in the office. There's, there's just, I, all I see is sanitizer. What's very important is don't use the elbow. A lot of people say, I don't, I'm not going to use my hands. I'm not going to press the eleva elevator button, but I'm going to use my elbow. Don't use your elbow. Why? Because you don't sanitize your elbow. You don't wash your elbow. If you're wearing clothing, like a, a long sleeve shirt, the infection, potential infection, is going to stay on your elbow. Don't do that. You might, you're better off pressing the button with your bare hands and then washing and sanitizing your hands compared to an elbow. And that also includes elbow bumps. Uh, and I'm sorry to, I apologize to a lot of the patients that came to me and uh, some wanted to hug, some wanted to, elbow bump, and I, I uh, declined. I very uh, politely declined. We'll talk about etiquette, pandemic etiquette, because it's not a great practice. At this time, we need to be socially distanced. We need to be careful what the things we are touching, and that includes uh, the elbow bumps. Now, how about opening doors? Are you going to be opening them with your body? Again, don't do it, because your body is then carrying whatever was on the door. Uh, you're not the only genius that thought about the system. So very simple to take just a paper towel, open the door, and then discard of the paper towel, of course, in, in the trash. <laughs> we see so many gloves and trash uh, because of uh, overly, you know, uh, our OCD behavior now at the pandemic. Now, in our office, our front door is constantly open between 8 and 5 during office hours. So uh, as we text you uh, to come in, come in, you don't have to open the door. And we just uh, installed an automatic door. So 
you don't have to touch the handle from the waiting room into the hallway. We will basically buzz you in. We have a cute little remote. We press D. Uh, we connected a tile so we don't use, lose it. And as we press the button, the door will automatically open inwards into the waiting room. Just stay uh, maybe a, a, you know, two feet away. Walk in. It'll stay open for about five seconds and walk, walk straight into the treatment room. Now, you don't have to guess. Our hygienist and the assistant will walk you there. Okay, so uh, there's no more touching handles, uh, door handles in our office. But when you're out, sanitize your hands every 30 seconds. And no more elbows, okay? Lesson number five, rinse and spray against COVID. Ari, what does that mean? Well, that basically falls under the subject of disinfection. And we know that uh, there are many substances available for disinfection or and we know that certain subjects are still very difficult to get, like Clorox and other things. And the latest in our research has been that a very old product, a very, very old product that has been used over 5,000 years, the old Egyptians have used it. Iodine has been used for wound disinfection and disinfection of surfaces and including in the mouth. Uh, the only new innovation what happened now is that iodine is being used now in an ionized way, meaning the molecules have been charged in a certain way that they attack a better surface and attack the virus in contact and kill it within a very, very short way. So we have instituted in our office now, when a patient is coming in, we used to rinse with many different kinds of antimicrobial substances. We included now in our new regimen that we rinse first with peroxyl, which is a diluted form of peroxide to loosen up the plaque, remove the obvious bacteria. And then we asked the patient to rinse and gargle with this iodine product that, by the way, is available from iodine or iotech and you can just google it they have a consumer division and you can order it directly from them uh, this particular product that ziff just shows is a different form of iodine that has not been ionized and it was very very popular for people who have watched our first webinar you remember that we modeled our office uh, on two institutions, one in Germany and one in Korea, that treated a lot of people, including Korea, at um, uh, much earlier than we were confronted with the COVID virus. And basically, both those institutions, their staff as well as their patient, had no COVID illness. And one of the main things that they use, besides what we share with you, is the use of iodine and betadine rinses. Unfortunately, this particular product that I'm showing you, the Betadine, is very difficult to get now, but we were very fortunate that an American scientist and institution is now producing the irons in Florida for doctor use as well as for the use uh, commercially available for patients. So I would encourage everybody to uh, think about having, besides the regular mouthwash, to gargle with iodine, especially the iorins that you can get from Iotech. And here you have it. And the important part of it is that it's not only a rinse that cleans wounds in the mouth, that removes bacteria, but the important part for the iodine, either in the betadine form or in the iorins form, is that you have to gargle with it for 30 to 60 seconds. What research has shown now is that the virus can enter mostly through the mouth or the nose, a little bit maybe even through, uh, through the eye if you touch it, but the virus enters the body and gets stuck in the oral throat area. That is where the body attacks it and the immune system kills it. And if it doesn't, then unfortunately it travels into the body and into your lungs and produces the damage. So this iodine rinse, should be mostly used for gargling. And anytime you feel like that you have been 
exposed to more people than you feel comfortable or you've been in the outside, I think it's very beneficial to have it at home and not only rinse with it, but also use it as a gargling device. And the next picture, Dr. Simon can show you that everybody who has been a patient of us knows to the right the peroxyl that was antibacterial, but really has not a total capacity for antiviral. We have advocated the use of Closis. It's a great mouthwash that after brushing and flossing at night, if you rinse with it, it removes a lot of bacteria and you wake up in the morning thinking that you just brush your teeth, you don't have any coating. But unfortunately, all those products, including the Peridex to the left that are antibacterial, don't have the high capacity to be antiviral. And so the IRNs is now our gold standard uh, for prevention of COVID. So basically we used to, a couple of months ago, to rinse only with the closest and then the eye rinse. We change our protocol now and we are using now the peroxo because it foams, it removes all the debris, including the bacteria. And then before the patient sits down for the treatment, we are rinsing with the eye rinse and gargling with it. When you come into our office, you will see in the, in the operatory that we have two sinks one assigned to the patient, one assigned to the doctors or the nurses. Uh, here you see the rinses being prepared on the patient side. Uh, don't get alarmed when you see the red and the blue signs uh, in the operatories. Uh, Dr. Simon will get into this, but basically the red means everything from the outside, including you, the patient coming in. That's the side where we still disinfect and it's totally clean, but it's dedicated to the patient including a surface for you to put your phone down, including surfaces to put your uh, belongings. And the blue is basically the disinfected area where we keep everything on top of it sterile. So Dr. Simon will go a little bit more into the details of it, but don't be alarmed. This is basically just an indication for us to keep those areas separate. Excellent, so yeah, Ari, thank you. We are very ter territorial. Uh, we wanted to make sure that things are very visible, uh, not just to us, but also to our patients. So we can direct you and tell you this is your area to put down your phone, put down your bag. Uh, here's, a, here's a little bag to, for your mask. Here's your rinsing. And uh, rather than not having uh, a clear distinction between the different territories. Uh, and here's a very simple example. Uh, we look at red as things that come from the outside. And as a patient, you are coming from the outside. So technically we assign the color red to your area. And that's when we uh, disinfect our mail. We turn it from red into blue until it gets into our personal mailbox so we can check our mail. It goes through a process, but you'll see those signs uh, in the operatories. Uh, and again, the red is for you, the blue, uh, is for us, for example, here's some surgical equipment. Uh, you wouldn't want to put your stuff next to it. Uh, yeah, and, and you would rather put it here. And if you made a mistake, it's not a big deal. We'll uh, disinfect the surface and we will guide you uh, to your territory. Okay. If, yeah, I may interject, uh, if I may interject, if it just comes to my mind that even so we are doing this, but not assigning any colors, uh, I think for our patient, it might be worthwhile to think about that you don't have to put colors on. But again, when you come from the outside to your home, you should have a dedicated red area in the entrance of your apartment house or wherever you are living and know that that's where you're depositing either your clothes that are uh, contaminated, your shoes or whatever. And then you step into the main part of the house that should be blue and that should be clean. And assuming that it's clean, therefore, as Dr. Simon has said, you don't have to wash your hands every 30 minutes. But please dedicate a certain area in your house where you are coming in unclean from the outside and dedicate this area for your protection. Thank you, Aaron. And here is uh, actually the front desk also has the same principle where if you needed the pen, we're going to try and uh, stay away from signing things. We're, we're moving into the uh, digital signing on your phone, our consent forms, our treatment plans, uh, your, your payments will be fully digital in the next uh, probably few weeks. 
But if there's a pan, uh, we will make sure that we give you a sanitized pan, and then when you're done, you put it in the red uh, section. Lesson number six, uh, filter your environment, and not less important, ventilate. Yeah, I think it's very important when um, you hear our governors, our officials, basically uh, giving us some guidelines. Don't eat in a restaurant inside. Uh, um, don't meet uh, in an environment where there is no ventilation. So we understand everything is important in regard of ventilation. In order to keep us safe at the office, uh, we installed from the beginning, and it was uh, a little bit difficult because uh, in the beginning, everybody wanted to get it, and we were very lucky to jump on the bandwagon very early. And basically, every, every operatory and every public space in our office has now a HEPA filter. There are many different kinds of HEPA filters. In the surgical rooms, uh, we have HEPA filters that have a high capacity with different speeds. And if cost is not a factor, I would very much recommend to use something similar to the IQ Air that has a long history in Asia with the SARS and other infections and basically is a very, very good product. Uh, at home, you don't have to spend the eight, nine hundred, or a thousand dollars for an IQ air. They are cheaper IQ airs for home use. Uh, some uh, uh, of our operatories where we know that we are not generating aerosols have an air filter that costs about two hundred and twenty or two hundred and thirty dollars that can be bought at Home Depot, and it is very, very well functioning and has been certified to remove the virus. Uh, in our office, as an alternative to the IQ Air, we are using something that calls Winter, but it's spelled with W-H-Y-N-T-E-R, and our hygienists love it. They are not producing any aerosols. This particular unit doesn't only filter the air, doesn't only uh, make the air circulate, but actually in the summer when the air condition may not work as ideally, it actually cools the air, so our hygienists love this unit. So it's not a question about money, it's a question about education and choosing the right product for us as well as for you in the house. The most important thing is, as probably all of you are aware, when you do meet people and uh, not want to limit totally your uh, social schedule, uh, try to meet outside whenever you have to be indoors, try to open the windows or doors. Uh, ventilation is very, very important and very beneficial. If you happen to have air condition in the house and don't want to use it, every air condition unit has a different function of just increasing the airflow. Make sure that at home, and we have done this in our office, that you don't exchange the filter only once a year or just uh, once uh, in the summer or in the winter. Uh, spend the extra few dollars and try to uh, change the filters either often or do the investment and uh, buy yourself the HEPA filters that will isolate the uh, virus. So ventilation is really, really important. Excellent. Moving on to lesson number seven, lucky number seven, is uh, prepare your kids for the pandemic. A lot of our patients, a lot of you may have kids or grandkids. I have four kids. Ari, you have kids and grandkids. And kids were hit hard by this pandemic. And my kids are like caged animals at home. And they're doing very well and they're behaving very well. But they're definitely hurt. Their social life is, is gone. And their, their friends and their sports activities and school, as much as they, you know, they used to complain, uh, the whole routine has been broken and replaced by a new routine. And we shouldn't take it lightly. Uh, their their classroom is replaced with your living room and homeschooling and and uh, doing everything at, on home and a lot of pressure on you parents to homeschool and we know that learning through Zoom only is not easy, not always effective, and kids don't always have the attention span to do this. So do the best that you can. Uh, you know, myself included, I have what we call Jewish guilt. And I should do more with my kids and I should work less and I should spend more time working on math and, and uh, letters. 
But let's lose the guilt. Let's do the best that we can. Let's count on the fact that uh, we are good people and our kids will be okay. Don't forget that, you know, in our competitive society, every child, wherever they're at, has the same handicap. Okay, so we all kind of have the same. It's not that one, some people are advancing more, if it even matters. So uh, lose the guilt, uh, support your kids uh, in their journey. This is just the new way to learn uh, during the pandemic. Schools are not opening up, so you may want to create, if possible, uh, some additional curriculum for your kids, create pods, uh, hire tutors. This is the year of the tutor. It's the year of the teacher uh, to enhance. And God bless teachers. Uh, you know, they're, they're doing the holy work and, and educating our kids and teaching our kids. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of things are happening in Zoom, even the, the physical activity and dance and exercise. I tried to build a little a gym in my house for my kids. You know, it was good for two days. And, you know, I had to put a phone in there for my kids to even pay attention. But that's the nature of kids. They don't like to be confined. They have this burst of energy that we unfortunately lose as we become adults and they just need to break through and they need to do great things. Now, which kids have the best attitude? Well, I think that's an easy answer. The kids that have the best attitude are the kids to parents that have the best attitudes. The parents that are not panicky, that are calm, that are composed with some guilt and your kids look up to you. So however you behave whatever you project during this pandemic is going to be mirrored by your kids. Okay. So we can't blame our kids for uh, getting into tantrums, misbehaving, breaking things. It's all us. So we have to set an example and it's very difficult to do because we are also under a lot of pressure, especially when we see our kids hooked on devices and having screen time, screen time that is off the charts. And, it's wonderful technology to take advantage of. We are now using amazing technology to communicate live and later on in a recording. Technology is one of those things like fire. Fire can help you cook your food, but can also burn your house. We need to find the balance. And the balance is, is lost at this time because our kids are looking for connection. And how easy is it to log into a device connect to YouTube, connect now to virtual reality at any age. Uh, there's something that is called Roblox. Uh, it's basically a virtual reality for kids, safe uh, to my understanding. And they have just their own world where, where they do things. They step out of the house, they build restaurants, they exercise, uh, they don't sweat, but they do something. And I, I just got it last week when I saw that they were playing Ro Roblox and I, and I figured, you know, this is really the way out. Ari and I are going to work 10 hours at work every day. That's their daily work. And we have to understand that. Now, something that I discovered uh, during the pandemic, uh, I discovered that I love chess and I was always afraid of chess. I felt that I was not smart enough to play chess and I always forgot how it works. But I discovered quick chess. All right, I recommended it to you. You got to buy it uh, for your grandkids and for yourself. And it's unbelievable for, for my, my uh, uh, four and a half year old to start playing chess and enjoying it. And of course, I have to bribe them. I offer my kids uh, something called V-Bucks from Fortnite. That's the kids' uh, cryptocurrency. I think, I think you can get 800 V-Bucks for... $10 or $100. I'm not sure. I need to figure out the exchange here. But uh, my kids dig it. They, they would come and play chess with me. And if they beat me, they get paid in V-Bucks. And there's also Roblox uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, and it's an incredible work, uh, world. And, uh, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. Join them. It's, it's just different. It's not necessarily bad. Okay? Now, to the very important question, how do you prepare your kids for the pandemic? Well, prepare them the same way you do. Teach them the three principles to avoid COVID-19. Stay away from sick people. Stay away from people in general because we are socially distancing. Self-protect with masks, with eye protection. 
And this effect, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Teach them the same things. Kids are smart, kids are compliant, and kids will listen to you, especially if you set an example. So I strongly recommend your kids wear masks, not when they're exercising, but wear masks, because once we get back to, I wanted to say routine life, it's not going to be routine, but once we go back to engaging with more and more people, they will have to get used to the mask. And I have to say that my kids uh, have it. They have 20 masks each, each thanks to, to Mrs. Simon, uh, and they got the matching attires. Please stay six feet away. Uh, they're set for the pandemic, but teach your kids and, and lead by example. And also when they start getting into their extracurricular activity, like uh, soccer practice, this is a private lesson, uh, they play with the mask and the instructor is with the mask. If, when I took my son for a haircut in somebody's garage, uh, insist that the person working with you is well protected. Uh, this is part of the etiquette right now. The pandemic etiquette is communication with other people and asking them, would you please wear a mask? Teach your kids to ask politely. And if they don't, you step away, okay? Uh, because you are socially distancing, and this is what uh, we are doing. Uh, there is now a, a product uh, with uh, silicone wristbands. Uh, each wristband signifies something else. The green is, I'm okay with hugs. The yellow one is, I'm okay with talking, but not too close. Red is stay away. I bought a bunch of red and they actually arrived just today because we need to be able to have a good etiquette. And if not everybody has the same uh, standard of social distancing as you, you don't have to be next to them. And maybe we wouldn't be where we're at if people would pay attention to uh, these types of things. Lastly, about kids, uh, you saw our, our screen guards or our sneeze guards in the office for our front desk. When you have kids, tutored at home and will need a lot of tutoring if possible if you have a backyard do it in the backyard not in the house so the tutor can come from the side entrance if if uh, accessible if available and get one of those sneeze guards they're not extremely uh, costly kid on one side tutor on the other side there's a gap in between you can pass the books uh, you stay socially distanced you have the sneeze guard uh, if not for anything else, it gives you a peace of mind. And it also teaches your kids that this is how the world works today. So teach them those three principles. And lose the guilt, very important. Lesson number eight, disinfect everything coming from the outside. Uh, I have to say Clorox is hard to get, hard to get, but the principle in my house and in a second, Ari will share as well, is when we buy groceries, they wait by the door, and then from the door, we put them in a big bin. It's my job to carry it into the kitchen, and then each item gets disinfected uh, with Clorox and other things that uh, we'll show you. Uh, we disinfect it, put it on the counter for five minutes, and then it's being delivered to either making a meal or into the fridge or the freezer. And the way we implement this is based on how we do it in, in the office, how we disinfect packages, and how we look at things from the outside, including uh, envelopes, uh, including patients, including people, including the staff and the doctors. How you do one thing is how you do everything. You can't be one person at work and the other different person at home and vice versa. It's the same thing over and over again. So disinfection of things from the outside is a must because there's a suspicion for COVID. And this is how it works in our practice with envelopes and packages. They get disinfected and then are safe to be brought in. Well, here we get into the uh, cleaning routine in our office. Uh, as uh, Dr. Simon has mentioned, uh, certain products are unfortunately in very sparse supplies. It's difficult to get Clorox. It's difficult to get some professional cleaning, surf cleaning surface materials. And uh, we basically have researched in the internet and found one product that happened to kill the virus 100% in very short time and is non-toxic. And this particular product is hypochlorous acid, in short, HOCl. 
uh, for uh, those uh, patients who have not been in our seminar before uh, as a repetition, you can buy it and you can get educated by a very good website under Pure and Clean. Basically, you will find out all about the chemistry. Uh, hypochlorous acid can be used in medications for the eye, in nose drops, in cosmetic products. It's totally innocuous in different concentration. And what we love about it is that we can either produce it by ourselves or buy it commercially. We basically cleaning all our surfaces with this particular product, including, as you will see later, we are fogging the air with this particular substance that basically reaches in any kind of surface that is not available to be done manually. So after every aerosol procedure generated by surgery or whatever, we have our assistants come in and we are fogging the room. And it's amazing for us to see that the little droplets that accumulate on surfaces and on or our windows, within literally 30 to 60 seconds, it evaporates, killed 100% any virus, including the COVID, and we don't even have to wipe it down. So we love this particular product. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive to buy it directly from the companies who are producing it. And therefore, uh, we have recommended to our patients and as well as you, uh, there is a site where you can generate your own hypochloric acid. And you're going to this particular company on the internet and buying yourself something that looks like a coffee cooker or a water uh, device. And you basically go to Ecolox and you buy this device. And with a few little steps, you can make your own hypochloric acid. Uh, the only complicating factor that's actually very easy, you have to buy some strip and make sure that the chemistry is in order. And the nice thing about this product is that the pH is not acidic or alkaline, and therefore it has no side effects. So those little strips confirm the fact that the pH stays close to neutral around seven. And basically you can produce your own supply unlimited and you can clean not only surfaces, but you can clean your fruits, you can clean edibles, you can clean uh, and spray your arms. And so we find that this is an all around great product that made it uh, possible for us to keep everything virus-free, COVID-free in a very easy and efficient way. There are many other products that are available uh, at one particular time and still very often it's difficult to get uh, uh, alcohol, but you can buy industrial grade alcohol, alcohol and very easily dilute it in the right concentration. And we are using this also in certain surfaces, especially instruments and surgical, uh, uh, surgical instruments and supply. And we have the big advantage that we have sterilization apparatus that on top of it kills the virus after they go through heat and sterilization. But um, from all the products, especially for home, I like the hypochloric acid the best because it's non-toxic and very easy to use. And you can either buy it or self-generate it. So basically treat everything as if it's COVID on it, your clothing, your environment, uh, the stuff that you bring home, including supermarket, uh, clean your shoes, clean surfaces, and be as vigilant. And um, we have managed to do this in the office with any kind of side effect, and knock on wood, have stayed healthy up to now. Excellent, so we're going to uh, move uh, forward to lesson Number nine, which is monitor your mouth, self-examine your mouth, uh, because we're all aware of the different signs of COVID-19. Uh, there are new, new signs and symptoms that are ad added on almost on a weekly basis. Uh, and anything that is different in your body, uh, just pay attention to that. Be in tune uh, with your body, how your body is communicating with you. There's a new uh, oral manifestation of COVID in the form of oral lesions. And it almost looks like a rash. Sometimes it comes with a skin rash. 
Uh, sometimes uh, it doesn't. Uh, it's pretty new information. Uh, they're called enanthems, uh, and they've been seen in patients with COVID-19. They're like small little spots, uh, look, again, look like a rash on the mucous membranes. What are the mucous membranes? That's the inside of the cheek, the inside of the lip, the floor of the mouth, right underneath the tongue and the soft palate. Uh, so take a look nowadays with our great cameras, with great light. Uh, take a look. You can take photos, email them to us. If you have a concern, we'll be able to uh, advise you. We, we're now thinking that this is the fourth key symptom of COVID-19. So self-examine and take a look. And in general, uh, the mouth is kind of a dark area. We don't always look, but make a habit uh, at least once or twice a week to take a look. Stick your tongue out to, to the mirror. Take a look at it front, bottom, the inside, side to side. Uh, you know, now that uh, patients are not seeing the dentist on a regular basis and not getting their teeth clean, a lot of our patients do, but many patients don't go to the dentist. Uh, things can develop and things can be missed. This is a patient that had a small lesion on the tongue that turned out to be cancer. Uh, and it could be very easily diagnosed by a self-examination. A cancerous lesion looks like an ulcer, a wound that doesn't heal. Last but not least, lesson number 10, reduce inflammation in your body. All right, that's important. I think it's very important, and that's what we talked about supplements. That's what we talked about staying healthy. But um, coming from us, being gum specialists, we are aware and we know that the mouth is one major gateway to your body. And we know that bacteria are entering, viruses are entering through the mouth. And the mouth is the biggest, easiest entry report for COVID. That's why we basically... Um, recommend washing your hands because we touch our nose, we touch our mouth, and cleaning everything that we place in our mouth. Uh, it's common knowledge for all our patients that uh, gum disease is a cofactor in many, many diseases. We all know, and it has pretty much established in research, that gum disease doesn't cause, but is a very large cofactor in heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, Alzheimer, rheumatism, or whatever. And basically, all good doctors recommend their patients to make sure that the mouse stays healthy because they are afraid everything now is about inflammation. We don't want to cause inflammation in the body. Inflammation is being caused by viruses and bacteria being released in the bloodstream. If you look very carefully, it's basically cytokines that are being released and it sounds like something that is very complicated but now suddenly everybody knows and has heard about the cytokine storm that's unfortunately one of the biggest comorbidity now in the covid if patients unfortunately ends up in the hospital it's the cytokine storm that puts the patient at risk of getting into a ventilator and having the possibility of passing away. So we have now seen by the NIH scientific articles, as Dr. Simon is showing you, that gum disease, periodontal disease, is a risk factor also for COVID because if you have bacteria and viruses in your mouth and they are not being controlled, it's becoming another cofactor to release cytokines and causing havoc with your immune systems. So as before, where it was common knowledge to keep a healthy mouth and have healthy gums in order to re reduce inflammation, it becomes even more important now to stay healthy besides that you want to keep your teeth and you don't want to have infection and pain and discomfort in your mouth. So for people where Dr. Simon alluded, the safest way is to stay at home. But if you stay at home, and you don't develop immunity by smelling the fresh air, and you don't exercise, and you're staying at home, and for the next three to six or nine months, don't get your teeth professionally cleaned, especially for some of our patients who know that they're already at risk, uh, we think that it's basically enhancing your risk 
in order not to stay healthy and stay ahead of not having a cofactor that may make the COVID virus survive easier. So we didn't have this before, but this is an article that just has been published recently by the NIH and unfortunately confirms the fact that the uh, risk factor for COVID is also included in periodontal disease as well as heart disease, diabetes, et cetera, and et cetera. So for all those patients who are coming in and confirming the fact that they see how our equipment and everything is there to protect them, we want to prevent what you see in this photo. We don't want to have red gums. We don't want to have inflamed gums. For many of our patients, they know that we check their oral bacteria to the left on the chart. And we just know that if we keep the gums and the teeth healthy and remove the bacteria, we will have less of a chance of having an inflammatory process, making us more of a cofactor to be susceptible to COVID. So this is not a self-serving uh, message from us. It's now becoming common knowledge and common knowledge among physicians. And we thought it's important for us to share this with you. Excellent. So reduce the inflammation in your body and mouth uh, by keeping great oral hygiene, even more now, flossing, uh, maintaining, if you have implants, maintaining your implants with uh, proxy brushes, rinsing with salt water, following those rinses uh, that we shared with you today. We want this part of our, our, our body to be uh, as healthy as possible because uh, two reasons. Number one, it's the port of entry of the virus, the COVID, into our, into our body. But also, we want to decrease inflammation to minimize those other comorbidities. So thank you all for uh, listening to our presentation and participating, asking all these great questions. Uh, we'll go uh, through a couple of questions here. Uh, why is it so difficult to get tested for COVID? When I go on the LA County site, they refer me to a testing site at least 40 miles away from LA. I think, uh, you know, this is not a question for us to ask. I think it's uh, where the government either isn't prepared or isn't as well prepared. We do know of and anybody who has difficulty getting into the public sites, we are connected to a network of other doctors that will easily test you. Uh, we have some doctors who will uh, actually uh, have the facility for drive-bys that you can drive with your car into their parking lot. So there are many different other opportunities. And unfortunately, again, when the government either fails us or makes it difficult, we have to innovate. And there are many good doctor's office who are helping out and you can reach out to us and we gladly will share with you that information. Okay, so Mark Greenberg is asking, how did you choose which brands of supplements to purchase? And that's a great question, Mark, because it's an, an uncontrolled market. It's not controlled by the FDA. You and I can start a company tomorrow if we wanted to, and it's not controlled. So there are a couple of, a couple of uh, things that you know, I adhere to, and I'd like to hear what Ari says. Uh, first of all, you can ask your physician. Uh, hopefully, they have a legit source of supplements. Number two, I like to buy supplements at Whole Foods because I know that the supplements that there go through a, a you know, rigorous testing and it's not going to be something fake or, or, or junky. So uh, Ari, how do, you, how do you choose your uh, brand of supplements? Unfortunately, that's a very good question. I think either you buy into the philosophy that you study on the internet. Unfortunately, some MDs are very in tuned to supplement some uh, MDs poo-poo it and uh, make it think it's not worthwhile. I think every one of us has to do their own research. Uh, I'm sure all of us know people who uh, abhor taking even one supplement and some other people go overboard and they take too many. I think that there, there is no gold standard. The only thing what I would agree with Dr. Simon, buy it from reputable companies, do your own research and back it up with your doctor that hopefully buys into the idea that supplements are important within reason. Excellent. So a question from Ronnie. Uh, I thought we were wearing masks to protect others, not ourselves. Does the mask I wear protect me? 
Well, you are protecting others, but if others are wearing masks, they're protecting you. So it's, it's, a, it's a benefit for everybody to wear a mask because when you wear a mask, you are protecting yourself, whatever is floating in the air. As Dr. Simon showed you, the virus itself is not floating, but there are droplets, there are aerosols. Uh, if you're walking outside, much more difficult to catch, but if you're walking by 10 people who are talking very loudly, I'm sure there's a cloud of aerosols or whatever. So you are protecting yourself as well as giving the courtesy of everybody else. It has been shown in all countries, especially as we know culturally in Japan and in the Far East, wherever they, the culture uh, prohibits people walking around without masks, there are less infections in regard to flus, and there is definitely a lesser incidence of the COVID virus. So it has been uh, really proven without any doubt that masks help us. Okay, very important question, Ari, and I think you can answer that. A question from Tina and Greg. Uh, is it safe for someone to use iodine rinse if someone has an allergy to shellfish and shellfish has iodine? Please advise. And a question from Greg along the same line. What do you do for people who have allergic reactions to iodine? Uh, if you go into the website that, again, uh, the people who are producing iod uh, iodine are scientists, they have published scientific articles, and they have received an FDA approval for using it to the public as a medical supplement, as well as with the certification that it removes the COVID virus. So that is the first fact. They have a great website that is available to patients with questions and answer, of which one of the first question is that they have checked with their doctors that anybody's allergic to shellfish or has an allergy to iodine should not be concerned because you're not ingesting it. You are rinsing with it and you are gargling with it. So basically on their website, they are basically certifying that you should not have any problems. Don't forget, when you are allergic to shellfish and or iodine and you get a medical test for contrasting when you do MRIs and certain tests, iodine is being injected into your veins, into your body. Totally different chemistry, totally different game. Okay, excellent. So uh, a good question from, from uh, William. I thought the virus cannot live on surfaces long. Do you think we really need to disinfect every package and piece of mail, or is it more about the process? So that's a great question. I would just say that you don't know who, who touched this, how many people touched whatever comes into your house. And uh, research has been all over the place that on certain uh, shiny subjects like, uh, like cellophane or uh, metal, the virus lives longer a week later and no, it doesn't live longer or whatever. I would just treat everything as if the virus is present. It takes only a few seconds and I would rather err on disinfecting everything than choosing myself and making the wrong choice of not having disinfected something that may have the virus. Excellent. Can you have gum disease and not know it? And what are the signs of gum disease? I think, again, the internet helps us a lot, but it's pretty obvious that you should not have any pain in your gums. Your gums should be, not be swollen. When you brush or floss your teeth, you shouldn't experience any pain or bleeding. You should not have a funny taste after your brush or floss. Uh, it's very easy to just lift up your lips and check for any enlargement of the gums if the gums are red, if the gums are swollen, it's pretty obvious that something is there. But there are some cases where you may have no symptoms and only gum disease, and sometimes in an advanced form, can be present. And that's why you need to have a dentist, a gum specialist, an hygienist check you. Everybody who's coming to our office knows that even if you are free of gum disease and you're coming into our office just for prevention, you do get checked by x-rays because there are certain things hidden underneath your teeth. You do get the funny number game that the hygienists call out. We are measuring pockets. So yes, you can function and not have any symptoms of heart disease and have a heart attack tomorrow. 
So you still need to check your blood chemistry. You still need to have professional testing. But the obvious sign of gum disease are bleeding, swelling, and discomfort. Excellent. Thank you, Ari. Uh, Ari, what type of PPM are we using and for what purposes? Okay, again, for everybody who is talking, PPM is the concentration, part per million, of the uh, HOCL, uh, the disinfection solution. Uh, anybody who wants to get a great overview, again, unfortunately, we are not getting paid for it. We are not uh, publicizing anything, but I do have to give credit for the pure uh, uh, site that everything is explained there. To make it very simple, uh, 400 ppm is the most concentrated solution that's being used to kill everything. We are using in the office when we are disinfecting surfaces, we are using the highest concentration, which is 400 ppm. Uh, when we are fogging the room, we are using 200 ppm. That is totally non-toxic. When it gets down to uh, cleaning your food, anything under 200 is totally safe. Uh, you will find out on the website that there are eye medication and uh, certain substances to treat your skin, and they go down up to 60 or 80 ppm. So as long as you stay under 200 ppm, and the home solution that you saw in the container that you can make yourself doesn't exceed the 200 level. Very good. A lot of questions about supplements. Please, please consult with your physician. Ari and I, uh, you know, we use supplements ourselves, but we're not in a position from, even from a knowledge perspective, to give you a full explanation and recommendation based on your particular uh, health condition and what your body needs. Uh, we are simply sharing what we use in, in our personal life and why. Why these particular supplements at this particular time. And right now we need to boost our immunity, we need to strengthen our immune system uh, to fight any intruder. So we can benefit from any help we can get and supplements are part of it, but it's not all. We can get a lot of those supplements in good nutrition. Uh, we can uh, focus on uh, physical activity, uh, great conditioning. We're not, we're not uh, you know, trying for the Olympics or being on the cover of, uh, you know, bodybuilder, but we really want to be in great shape because if we're in great shape, we can function great. We are focused, we are calm. And it so happens that our immunity also strengthens uh, with it. The only thing I wanted to add to it, uh, I would admit that I'm a supplement junkie. And so I may err on taking too much, but, uh, we have to be vague because we are not physicians, but my main thing and Dr. Simon's main thing is we wanted to share the knowledge. We wanted to share about disinfection solution. We wanted to share about all different masks. We are putting it out there. Now that you have heard about those products, now it's available to you for research, for you to share on the internet, to find information about it, to share it with your doctor and anybody else. So those are not strict recommendation that every one of those supplements that we mentioned has to be taken, but it's worthwhile for you not having to spend the many hours that Dr. Simon and me have done. We know that they provide a certain value. Are they good to be taken all at once or separately or half of them? That we leave up to you, but at least we wanted to share that knowledge with you. Uh, what about touching hand sanitizer bottle before and after disinfecting. So this is more the minutia, and the minutia is actually very important. If COVID is on your hands, aren't you just putting it back on your hand when you put sanitizer bottle away after use? Um, that's correct. That's correct. That's why we love what we have here in the office. We have the touchless sanitizers, so you don't have to touch a, uh, touch a pump. But, um, you know, look at, the, look at it this way, uh, Karen. Nothing is 100%. That's just the reality. Nothing is 100%. Uh, what we're trying to do is change the odds in our favor and against COVID. So we're going to do the maximum that we can to avoid contamination, avoid infecting ourselves and, and others. So if you look at the sanitizer bottle, well, if it's just under your, uh, you know, in your possession, uh, you can sanitize the bottle. And, and this is so absurd because when we bring things into the house and we buy uh, cleaning products, I find myself sanitizing 
soap or sanitizing a disinfectant, which is, <laughs> it sounds completely absurd, but, you know, do the best that you can. And, and, I'm, and I'm so glad to see that you're looking into the details because uh, the devil is in the details. Ari, any final words? We have such great comments. I would love to read all of them, but so many great comments from our, uh, you know, loyal uh, patients. We, we appreciate your trust. We appreciate your attendance. Uh, look at us as your resource into this world. Uh, we are sharing with you everything that is new, and we'll keep having those webinars, uh, COVID-related and other things that come up in the future, because this information is not always made available to you. And if you want to gain information from watching television and, and uh, going online, that's a possibility, but sometimes we get even more confused. We are distilling what we know in a, an hour, an hour and a half, uh, so you can get this information. Feel free to share those webinars uh, with your friends and family if you found them useful, uh, and feel free to interact with us. The only thing that I would add, both Dr. Simon and myself are in the office. All our patients know that if we don't have time to return phone calls for questions or resources, please leave us a message. We will call you back. Uh, a lot of patients know that we are available on our cell. So please use us as a resource. You're never bothering us. It's a compliment if you're asking us for any advice or using us as a resource. Excellent. Excellent. So at this point, Ari, thank you so much for uh, being a wonderful partner and preparing the office during the COVID time and your dedication and your obsession with preparation is admirable and i appreciate you as a friend and i appreciate you as my mentor and i'm really the lucky luckiest person in the world to have met you about 20 years ago and formed this beautiful friendship friendship and partnership and i think that uh, our interaction uh, was extremely synergistic during this time uh, the things that you love to do i don't and vice versa and i think this is what we were able to achieve because of this interaction we are stronger together and vice versa. I couldn't wish for a better partner. Uh, to all our patients, please stay healthy. Please keep yourself healthy. And we look forward to see you in the office. All the best. Stay Bye -bye. healthy and safe. All the best to you guys. Mm -hmm.